Okay, let's try a depth and pressure problem. Um, in this case, we have a dam. Let's take a look what the dam looks like. Uh, it looks like this picture right here. Uh, this dam is holding back a lake that is 200 meters deep. It's 180 meters from the top of the lake to the top of a square flow gate near the bottom of the dam. And this flow gate is 10 meters tall and 20 meters wide. What force must be applied to keep the door on the flow gate closed? Okay, well, as in any problem, let's start by drawing a picture of this scenario. So basically, we have a dam that is holding back a lake or ocean or some other body of water. And near the bottom of the dam, there is a flow gate, the top of which is 180 meters from the top of, sorry, ooh, sorry, 100, let's be careful here. It is 180 meters from the top of the water. and 190 meters from the bottom of the um, flow gate to the top of the water. Now, the question is what force needs to be applied. Um, we know that pressure and depth are related. Rem remember that the pressure at a depth y is equal to p naught add rho g y. Um, in this case, at the top of the water, you have atmospheric pressure pushing down, but you know you also have atmospheric pressure pushing against the flow gate down here. So it turns out the atmospheric pressures are going to cancel out, and, and we only want the pressure differential, which is going to come from the rho g y bit. Uh, we also remember that force is equal to pressure times area, but in this case, the deeper we get, the more pressure it is. So simple multiplication isn't going to work. We're going to have to integrate. You might be tempted to try to take the average of 180 and 190 meters. That won't work, and I'll show you why in a second. So really what we need to use is that force equals the integral of the pressure as a function of y times the width of the flow gate times dy, where area is going to equal this width times dy. We're looking at every little sliver at every height of that flow gate. And when we start plugging things in, the pressure is going to turn into a rho gy. Make sure you don't mix up your rows and p's. It's really easy to do. Width times dy, and we're integrating from 180 meters to 190 meters. Now, when we do that, this turns into 1 half rho gy squared, and the rho and g, of course, were constants, times width, and we're integrating from 180 to 190 meters. And if we plug in chug numbers, we get one half times, okay, the density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter, which turns into a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, make sure you attempt the dimensional analysis if that's not instantly obvious to you, which it wouldn't be to me. Uh, G is 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, I'm going to throw the W in, which is 20 meters, and we're going from 190 squared to 180 squared, and the units out here will be a meter squared. And if we plug this into a calculator, we're going to get, uh, where do I hide that calculator? Okay, I can't open, oh, there we go. I'm gonna get 500 times 9.8 times 20, which is gonna equal 
I guess we could have done that in our head. 98,000 times 190 squared. Oops. Uh, which is not 188. Let's try that again. 190 times 190 is 36100. Subtract 180 times 180, which is equal to 32400. Uh, if we check out all the units, it turns out everything turns into a Newton. And um, I'm going to let you plug and chug that last bit. So, hope that one was fun. Um, we'll go on from here in another problem in a second.